everyone, it's Darren from King's Castle Inflatables. On today's video, we'll be reviewing my $3,500 one trip dolly. Check out my experience and you make the call. Is it cap, is it crap, or is it facts? You decide on this episode of King's Castle Inflatables. First, let's talk about the good stuff. The One Trip Dolly claims to handle up to 600 pounds with ease, making it a beast for loading and unloading. We also ordered the optional winch for rolling those larger units, at exactly $3,370 for dollars after shipping. Having just purchased another competitor's dolly for $3,100, I was hesitant to fork over another large sum of money. Let's take you back to May 20th, 2024. After a long phone call with Cade, we were convinced and decided to make the purchase. We selected the Yamaha green to match some of our business logo colors. We also selected the 48 volts electric winch option. Final total was $3,374 and based on my order shipping was 21 to 30 days. So the dolly should be here by June 20th. On June 6th, I was excited to get a text from Cade telling me your dolly should be completed in a few days, and then headed off to Powder Coat. June 16th, 10 days after the text from Cade, I decided to reach out since I had not heard anything else. No reply. June 18th, I inquired again. No reply. June 21st, two weeks after the text saying a few days, also now past the date promised on my order, I reached out again. This time I got six words back. Your dolly is at powder coating. Fast forward to July 7th. 16 days later here is where it begins to get weird. I ask again for a status update. No reply. Then my phone rings and Cade tells me he will call me right back. A couple of hours later, he calls me to tell me he has some bad news. It seems his painter powder coat company no longer carries the green color we ordered. And he was sorry, but if I selected another color that was in stock, he would escalate getting mine done. At this point, I was furious. Our short Utah season was nearly half over. Cade had convinced me to sell the other dolly. We had to purchase his. And apparently he lied that it had even been at the powder coating. Cade told me he was leaving on vacation. And he would get it all done before he left and ship it out, apparently. He forgot and went on vacation without shipping it out. July 15th. I get a message that he just got home. And he wants to quality check all of the dollies before they ship out. And then that night goes live on Facebook with more excuses as to why orders are so behind. That same day he is arguing with me on Facebook Messenger about he didn't promise me when he was going to ship it, but he tells me he couldn't stomach the thought of a poor product going out. I'm not going to bore you with any more details. 
but it was one excuse after another. I finally got notification that my dolly had arrived at a local trucking company more than an hour from my house, and I went to pick it up July 19th. Let me introduce you to our one-trip dolly. This is our uh, one trip dolly. This one trip dolly is almost a year old. <laughs> well, a year from when we ordered it. We ordered it in May of 2023. It's now June 1st of 2024. Let me show you a couple things um, real quick. This is how we have to lock the brake, because as you can see here, his uh, handy dandy welding snapped, and there's a little lock mechanism that goes there, and this, once you engage that lock, this holds it in place, but um, he had it tack welded with two little spots there and there. And that broke. And it probably broke because you literally have to be He-Man to squeeze this brake down. So I zip-tied it. We unzip tight here. I zip-tied it so that I could at least lock the brake down. Um, but yeah, let me, uh, let me show you this fancy thing here. Close my knife. I notice we uh we got the designer one one hand grip um no hand grip over here but that's all right not a big deal so yeah so in order to get this brake to lock down you literally have to squeeze it with the strength of he-man and then you hope the little deal is passed you have to squeeze it enough so that this pin that was here falls down in front of that and then it locks this in place. So let me uh, let me get it off the trailer real quick. I'll show you a couple things. I'm gonna do this one-handed, so give me a second. Let me drop this bounce house off. All right. So, um, the light, the light didn't work. So we used this from about um, let's see, we ordered it in May. We finally got it towards the end of July. Um, in Utah here, season's a little short because of winter and weather. So we used it till about the end of September. October was too cool, so we didn't do any rentals in October. And we just started up again um, April 28th was our first rental. So we um, we started rentals again this year. So essentially we used the dolly for less than three months. Um, we were the first ones. We were his uh, testers of the headlight and that was pretty exciting. So um, got the headlight and let me show you here how this whole thing operates. This is where you plug in the charger for the headlight and the winch. And then to charge the the motor here, you plug in here, this 48 volt. 
so I came out for our first rental. Um, it was dark. I was trying to get everything set up at nighttime for our rental delivery the next morning. So I turned on the headlight and it didn't work. So there's a headlight switch here. And then this is for the um, reverse or forward. So headlamp here, uh, as you can see right now, it works. Let me turn it off. Right now it works. And that same power to that also controls the winch down there. So it didn't work. I went to go, I, I said like, well, I just won't use the light tonight. I finished loading everything up and then I went and plugged it into the charger uh, for overnight. So next day I go back out to go use it. Still doesn't work. I sent Kay a message at One Trip Dolly and his response was, oh, you must have a power issue. And I thought, well, that's pretty wise of you to know it's a power issue since the light doesn't work. And I asked if he had suggestions and he says, you'll need a new battery. And he says, well, this thing's only about three months old. Why should I need a new battery already? And um, he says that that's just, I guess, how it goes. So uh, he sent me the link to the battery, which you cannot find anywhere unless you do like some Chinese Amazon dropship company. Um, so I found another battery, put it in there. Interesting when I was to get to the battery, you have to take all of these screws out. Uh, there's two down here. There's three up here. These were self-tapping screws. Two of them weren't even into the tube here. Uh, in fact, the heads were just broke off and they were just spinning up on here. And so um, as I'm kind of doing this, I noticed there's a bunch of really weak welds. Uh, and a lot of these welds are kind of splitting. Um, one of the prime examples was there where that brake switch was, a different view of it, where this brake switch was welded on. It was barely welded on to this little curved area here. And there was two little tack welds, one on the top right there. Let's see if you can see this. So there's one on the top and there's one on the underside of that little tack weld holding that little cylinder on. It's supposed to stop and hold the brakes in place. Um, some of these other welds you can kind of see it's almost it's hard to tell here but you can kind of see it's almost like they didn't even knock the slag off like they welded it and just um, powder coated or sprayed right over it um, he says powder coated but a lot of this is almost looks like it was a spray paint because it's all scraping right off and I know the powder coat um, doesn't scrape off like that so one of his excuses and why it took so long for this to come is was powder coating um, but again, here's another one of those welds where you can see that weld is splitting there. And here's another area where you can see the paint, not the powder coat, but the paint is all rubbing off. Um, so again, for, you know, almost $4,000, I would expect a little bit more quality. A, a lot of tension on these lines here. Um, and you know, as this, I, I mean, a lot of these are little things, you know, you could have run this line behind this bar because the way it sits here, it constantly chafes against this. Um, a lot of extra pressure put on where they all come together here to control the individual wheels from the motor. Um, and so just a lot of really poor design, a lot of throw it together real quick, more of a quantity versus quality. Um, but what's interesting is when we had to finally open up this, he had literally zip ties in there holding these batteries in place, um, for the mount. Sorry, this is a magnet I had stuck on there to hold a piece of paper, but literally had, um, batteries in there zip tied in the box so they wouldn't wobble around. But yeah, um, you know, I mean, like I said, for almost $4,000, used it for, I mean, it's been a year, but we've literally used it for about three months um, and for it to stop working already. Really kind of frustrating. Um, and if you're considering buying one trip dolly, 
I would definitely do your looking around, do your due diligence, make sure you're getting something that's going to be quality at last. But more importantly than that, make sure that the person that you're working with stands behind their product. I don't feel that Cade stands behind his product. I think he's all about making the dollar. And if he can make a quick buck, he'll go out and spend it and then move on to the next victim. You know, in business, I think it's important to know that there's going to be a, a, a failure rate, you know, through your beta and alpha testing stages before you release it to the, to the public. You know, you understand that there's going to be a certain failure rate and you budget that in. And if you're strong and you stand behind your product, you understand that part of that budget is going to go back on, on some RMAs or, um, you know, replacing some parts or shipping something else out to, to make it right. I think it ultimately comes down to standing behind your product, making sure your customers are satisfied so that one, they'll refer you two they'll give you good recommendations, but three, um, that they'll know that you make a good product and be proud to own it. And at this point, I'm definitely not proud. Cade, I had another dolly that probably was equally as bad, a badass dolly. And he convinced me after some talking on the phone that I should sell that one and, and go with his product, which I did. And, you know, he made some promises on his website when I purchased it. And I'll insert some screenshots here in the video, but when I purchased it, um, it said 16 or no, 21 to 30 days built, shipped and delivered. Uh, this took from the time I ordered it in May. Um, I didn't get it, like I said, until the end of July. And he did a lot of ignoring messages, no communicating. Um, I would try to follow up with him and communicate with him. It didn't happen. We initially ordered this, this green. Um, and then even after it was supposed to be delivered, um, even after he said it's been in powder coat the whole time, he messages me back and says, oh, by the way, we can't get green anymore. I'm like, well, wait a minute, this thing is already supposed to be in a powder coating. Like, what, you're telling me now that you can't get the green, but it's been in powder coating for more than three weeks? So a lot of the excuses that he made didn't, didn't add up. Um, it was a little fr frustrating and hard to deal with that. And, and then when he didn't want to respond or didn't want to um, take accountability for it, he just wouldn't respond at all. And so it's, it's difficult to deal with someone in business that's like that. And I, again, I would just, my recommendation is if you're, if you're looking and you want to buy a dolly, which I think is a very smart investment, do your due diligence. Talk to other people that have bought it. Don't just give your money blindly to someone who's more than willing to just take it from you. Um, make sure that the product you're getting is going to support your business and it's going to stay up and running because it's a significant investment. Um, and, you know, for some of us that are in smaller business and just getting started, we don't have an extra three, four, five thousand dollars laying around. And so some of us try to take the easy way out and buy the less expensive build. Uh, unfortunately, I did, but learn from my mistakes and, um, and do your due diligence. If you need to save up and get something that's more money, um, but it's been tried, tested, and reviewed, then so be it. Um, but hopefully this is useful to you guys. Uh, I, I would show you guys it working. The, the motor in itself, it does a fine job and it gets it up and down the hills uh, and some of these bigger slides that we have that I still need to clean. Uh, it does a good job and it saved my back definitely a few times. So there are some benefits to having it. But again, I mean, if you're going to pay that much money, you want all of the features to work and you don't want them to only work for a couple months out of the box. But um, a lot of these parts he has sourced in this are straight out of China. Um, straight out of like an Alibaba. A lot of the parts he has in this are from Harbor Freight. And so it's like pick the cheapest part you can throw on it. Um, do so and, and hopefully sell them and get as much profit as you can and then continue the same operation. But I feel like this this first phase of these dollies, we are kind of his beta test. Uh, wanted to see what works. And then now he does not stand behind his product whatsoever. So take that for what you will. I'm sure he'll refute this video and he'll refute my review, but, um, but, uh, take it for what you will, um, uh, experience it for yourself if you want to, but I wouldn't not recommend it. So anyways, hope to see you guys in the next one. Um, uh, sorry, this has just been a candid review. I just wanted to get my feelings out there and, and share with people my thoughts and my review. But, um, uh, like I said, thank you for sticking around. If this helped, give it a thumbs up. Appreciate it.
and look forward to you guys talking on the next one. King's Castle Inflatables. Let them bounce.